Hey, hey, y'all. We are back with week three of the Werner Cowell Crochet Along, and I am so excited. Me too. I have been loving seeing everybody's combinations and work so far. Um, there are some super unique ways that people have done it. I know someone's adding a third color, which I think is super, super fun. And I cannot wait to see how it works out. Um, week three is all about our color changes, all about this. Oh, it's really hard to do that over here. This section. Um, and so this is our last week of the Verna Cowl. Look, Nikki's got hers up there. Uh, last week of the Verna Cowl. And this week we're going to get our colors done. And all of our ends we've done. Don't be like me who still has ends kind of hanging out. This one, all of the ends still. Um, so we're going to get all that done, take our finished photos. And that is it for this week. This week is just finishing it up and getting to wear it. I mean, I know some of you won't be able to do that yet because it's still very warm where you are. But fall is coming. Yes, I'm so ready for fall. So ready. Um, hey, Heather. Hey. You know what? I actually still had my ends hanging out of my Verna Cowl. But when I went to Arkansas Yarn Co., we had this on display there. And I'm literally standing there talking to people weaving my ends in. I was like, oh, I, I guess I need to just go ahead and be dedicated. Oh, too well, funny. It's so bad. I still have like all of my ends on the original. <laughs> so funny. So let me tell you. Okay, you know, so Danielle showed me a trick or told me a trick about how to carry your yarn up in the back. So you don't have to cut your ends. Look, I got, I don't know what, I, th I think I was like tired, but look, I, oh. <laughs> on the front. So literally when I'm crocheting, I have to pull my yarn through it because I'm too stubborn to cut that end. So I'm still carrying it up the back, but I have to go through this hole to get more yarn. I'm like, <laughs> really? <sighs> well, I've done that too. I've carried it on the wrong side of things and then it just, it makes for a little bit of work. And I have cut the yarn and just weaved it in and started again, but it was not because I wanted to. And I was very bitter about having to do it. I think, I really think that's what I'm going to have to do because I know I want to take another picture and like just explaining the whole, you know, it's like a little yarn bowl. <laughs> just yeah. holding my yarn. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Oh. I know. Um, I actually got a head start. Well, I started working on it yesterday on the way home for week three and I have to show you how incredibly pretty these two colors worked up like you all picked the best combination and I'm so happy we went with oh I can't even lady violet and the solid blush or something Rose or something yes oh, yeah. it's been so long I can't remember uh, I can't remember all the yard names but like check this out how pretty is that turning so pretty those colors are fantastic together. Oh my goodness. That and is from, what a year or two ago too, the colorway? Uh Lady Violet, I think, was part of that 50s gal, I think. Okay. I think. Don't quote me, but I think that's where I got it from. Mm, but so pretty. So pretty. I'm obsessed. And I love how everybody convinced me to go variegated versus my initial thought of going solid then variegated. I, I love that. And it's such a, I don't know, girly piece. You know what I mean? Like it can, it's really like a dressy color. Like you could really dressy, like dress it up too. So I have plans like this one. So the blue one that I finished just before this cow started, uh, my mother-in-law actually fell in love and wanted that piece. So hers, she has it. Um, and I was going to keep that one for me because I fell in love too, but it looks amazing on her and blue is her color. Like she looks stunning in it. And I'm hoping I can convince her for some photos, but we'll see. <laughs> so this one I am definitely keeping for myself. I really feel like these are my colors and I, I'm like planning outfits around this. I know that's what I was thinking. 
I was thinking those are so your colors. Oh, thank you. I, I'm in love with this. Like I've tried it on. I'm so random, but I try things on in the middle of like doing this stuff. And I, I am do. so it's Oh, yeah. it's really hard to style yourself on camera. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. And especially with StreamYard because it's opposite. Yes. You know, I haven't even tried mine on and I even um, connected mine around earlier. Like, yeah. I haven't locked one yet, so it's not, not there yet. Let me, I haven't counted my stitches. I was going to go ahead and start the next round, but I haven't counted my stitches. So um, I'm just not going to, but let me try it on. Let me see. I can't oh, wait. I can get around all of this yarn going everywhere. <laughs> That's me too. I have two. Yes. Yes. I like it. I love it. It looks so good. <laughs> oh, I love it. And those just scream Nikki colors. Like, yes. This. yes. Oh. Stunning. Stunning. Thank you. So, I guess, you know, one of the questions I have for everybody making the Verna Cowl is. Are you making this for yourselves or are you going to gift it or are you going to add this to your um, stockpile to sell for fall mix? Yes, I'm curious too. I tell you what, I don't make to sell usually. Like if I have somebody local that's like, hey, is this for sale and it's something I'm willing to part with, I'll sell it. Mm -hmm. But one of my triangle cowls like every time I posted it I had somebody like I sold I think three of them last year people bought them for Christmas gifts and I was so shocked by it but people love triangle cowls I think it's a great um thing to add if you have like an Etsy shop or you do a market or something like that I think it's a great thing to add yes I totally agree I love the versatility of just throwing it over my my neck and just going um, while I really do love big triangle scarves, sometimes I feel they're too bulky, depending on what I'm wearing. Um, my overcomer triangle scarf, I love that one, but I tend to wear it more at home or um, I did wear it a fair bit in the wintertime because it was just really cold. But it has a lot of bulk when you're wrapping it around um, around the back there. So I tend to wear it more at home, but it is my cozy wraparound piece that I just I just love. <laughs> I love the security of it being around my neck. Like I can just put it on there and it stays with the shawl. I feel like I'm constantly adjusting it or I'm scared it's going to like fall off and hit the ground. I mean, like you said, I do like my shawls, but I really like the cowls. Well, yeah. And with the shawls, you have to usually have some sort of enclosure, like a shawl pin or cuff or something to secure it. So it doesn't move around as much because, uh, yeah, you don't want to fidget with it all the time, right? Yeah. Um, sorry, Kim, I missed your comment. Um, she said, hey, ladies. Hey, Kim. And she did the same thing and had to cut it. I think I'm going to have to cut mine. Um, Katie said that hers will be a Christmas gift. You are oh. so sweet to part with it. Yeah, you are. I think uh, whoever you gift it to is going to absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. And Kim says she will keep hers for herself or if they have a Christmas gift exchange. Well, maybe you can make another one so you can keep your first one for you. Yes. Um, and then Heather said the first one's for her. The blue one is a gift. Oh, and she's making a third one. I must have missed that. It's for a friend. <gasps> she loves oh, it. Oh, so. yeah. That makes me so happy that you're loving it and you're making a third one. Just thank you. Thank you. Um, it's just such a special cowl to me. Like, I just, I love it. And I love that there's so many people in the group. This is their first cowl. And I think I've surprised a few of them and had some private chats with a few of them. And I just love like that they're willing to try. They're willing to try to make a wearable piece with my cowl. And I'm hoping that it does everybody justice. I'm hoping it works out and I hope they all love it and fall in love with their piece at the end here. And I love how willing you are to, um, to help too, which, I mean, we're both that way, but I know that every time I answer, you know, somebody's question about one of my designs, they're just like, thank you so much for responding. Not a lot of people do. And I'm like, 
what? Oh, I, I, I love that you do that. Like you're willing to do videos. You're willing to take the time to private chat. So that means a lot. I think that's really important when you are the creator of the piece. You're the only person that truly understands the inner workings of the design. And I mean, there's other people who tested it and they know what's going on and whatever. And I've seen many of them step up and help. And I appreciate that all the time. But I think as the designer and the creator of the piece, you really need to be open to, you know, going that extra mile for these people because they, <clears throat> excuse me, um, they're there, they supported you, they bought the pattern. And if you can't take a minute just to help, just one minute and half the videos I've taken for people have literally taken minutes yeah. and it's like show quality by any means, but it does help at the idea of what they need to do next. And I think that for most people that have reached out to me, it has, it has helped. So I do think it's really important as a designer to just take that minute and address those questions. And I mean, I've had it happen to me where designers won't respond to me when I was hung up on something or I needed clarification. And I don't think like, I know things get missed and I have missed things. I will be the first to admit that I've missed comments or questions or emails um, because it is the internet and it is ele electronics. They do malfunction. We don't always get the messages or, or whatever, but I do try very hard to, respond to each person. And I think that I hope, hope more designers will do that. And I hope that they're, it's just miscommunications when they're yeah. not. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people, like I get, you know, like you were saying, emails get lost and saw that. So I, I don't take it as that they, you know, they mean anything by it. Things just get lost, but yeah. And I love the videos too, because I'm such a visual learner. Sometimes things, even it can be like the simplest instructions, they just won't click. But then I see somebody do it and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, I was way overthinking it. <laughs> yes. Actually, that happens to me too. And actually those little videos, you make it once and you save them for however long or just have them in a place that they're accessible. Mm -hmm. And the next email you get or the next question you get, about that same thing, it's just as simple as sending that little video, give a little blurb, like explain what you're trying to do in words. If Because some people are more um, words to paper and then other people are very visual. I tend to be pretty visual too, like you. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's there and then it's just easy enough to send that video and let them get at it. And that's actually why I've started posting some of my how-to certain stitches when uh, on my Instagram page, because then it's there and you can direct them. And you know, what's so funny is I love watching like crochet and knit videos, even if I know how to do the stitch. Like I just love, we all like hold our yarn a little different or, you know, work like, however, hold our hook differently. I love watching them. So I think that's a plus, even if, you know, somebody knows the stitch. Um, so Heather said that she, her, I guess her third one, um, I believe she's making it in number one way and tinkering with row counts. Oh. oh, I cannot wait to see that. I've been dying to see someone do it in fingering weight yarn. Yes. Yes. I actually want, there's several triangle cowls that I want to make with fingering weight yarn because, oh, I just love the drape. And the, there, for some reason, it just feels even softer. Um, so, Heather, I can't wait to see pictures of that. Well, and when it's, like, lightweight like that, one like a one weight, it's so light. You could wear it for more than just mm -hmm. during spring. I mean, we could probably wear our four-weight yarn here all year round, really, except for a couple of weeks in the summer because it stays pretty cool. But uh, a one weight cowl that would be stunning and that you could wear and layer over all of your nice wear pieces or yeah. or just for fun yeah so let us know how that goes yeah <clears throat> well I'm excited that we are on to week three because it was really hard to hold myself back and not finish the cowl and now it's like the gates open we can finish if we want to <laughs> actually I would really love 
to see. I'll put the post up in the group again, but I would really love to see some of these finished pieces um, that's being worn. Like if any of you can take photos with you wearing it or a model or however you want to, but I would love to see them being worn and enjoyed. Um, your finish, your week three finishing photo is literally just the finished cowl. So however you want to do it, I think that'll be awesome, but I can't wait to see them worn. And one other thing I do would ask if any of you are willing to do so is if you could start a project page on Ravelry so others can see your cowls, I would love that and be super appreciative of it. It just helps other people looking at the pattern to see whether or not if that's going to be something for them. Um, Thank you for that. Because I always forget about, like, I don't know how to use Ravelry. I know how to add a pattern. I know how to use my library. But I love that. And you, I think you said something, I don't know, maybe it was a comment in the group and you're like, hey, can you add that to the project page? And I was like, that is such a good idea. So thank you for bringing that up. Well, I think <laughs> it's important And like, I also think it's important just to give a few sentences, and I know most people do, about what they think or how they felt about it. Uh, because I do find that's one thing when I'm looking at patterns to purchase, I always go and look at the projects and then get a feel for how people felt about it. And mm -hmm. now, like, it's not to look up bad reviews or anything, like that's not the intent, but I wanted to see the general feel of you know, how people felt about it, how easy it was for them, whether or not I would recommend this for a beginner or an intermediate or, or whatever. And then it's also to see what other yarn I could use that worked really well with the pattern. Because that is a question I actually got last week, I think, was why the other cowl, the blue one that I was wearing was so drapey and so movable. Like, this has a pretty amazing drape to it. And, mm -hmm. um, I do explain that it all comes down to the yarn you're using. You have some thicker worsted weight yarn and you have some thinner worsted weight yarn. You have some more soft and, you know, uh, flowy yarn. I call it flowy, but I'm not sure that's the right I word. Too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, all, I think that a lot of where how drapey, how flowy your piece is really does depend on what yarn you're using. If you're using uh, a softer, silkier, more movable yarn, you're going to have a more drapey piece. If you're going to use something a little bit more stiff, like I find Craftsmart uh, yarn, it's wonderful to work with, but it's a bit of a stiffer yarn. So I find it's really great for hats or fitted hats and whatnot. And I use it a lot for that. But if you want it more drapey, you definitely have to um, move up a hook size or two. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too, is moving up a hook size. And I feel like to some of it, like um, the thicker worsted weight, like you're going to get a smaller size too. It's not going to be as, as long. So what um, I think comes into our play here is because we're using your yarn, um, a hand dyed actual wool, um, blocking becomes a very important part of your cowls like you can increase your size that way just by a little bit it also helps with drape and and whatnot i do find blocking to be a very important part of any hand dyed wool piece i agree as much as it's not my favorite thing to do and really it's it's not hard it's just an extra step kind of like weaving in the ends but man, it will make your stitches just pop. Like you can tell the difference between Danielle's and mine. I haven't blocked mine. Um, and you can just tell the difference. Like if I blocked mine, it would probably come down even a little further. Um, so yeah, so it, it does make a difference. Heather sent me, if you can see that Heather sent me a picture of hers. I think this is one that she hasn't, uh, posted a picture of. I don't know if you can see it very well on my phone. It looks but, really um, like it looks like it's overexposed, but I could see at the beginning how pretty. Yeah, I'm excited it, to see that one. It's her uh, fingering weight one. I think so. I, I think it is her fingering weight one. 
Um, so someone said I used wool and other. So that explains why mine is a bit choked up. Yeah. But once you block, like we were talking about, once you block it, it, it'll, it'll even it out a little. So. And at least try it. Cause even if it's a combination wool slash acrylic, it would still, still block out nicely. Um, Heather, I block. How do you, I will happily take a video of how I block my cowls since they're joined, but essentially it's exactly like how Nikki's holding it. Because I had to ask her the same thing. I'm like, girl, I'm sitting here like, I don't, and she's like, look, this is what you do. And so this is the uh, opposite, but yeah, I think a video would be, would be great, but that's how she folds it. And it's just, everything is just kind of, oh my gosh, tucked in the back. Oh, look at those ends. Ha. So, <laughs> yeah. Yes. And you just lightly stretch it out and pin it. And it just, oh, it just does wonders. Like you don't think it's going to do much. When I first started blocking, I was like, there's no way this is going to like do much of anything. It's going to look the exact same. But then I was shocked with how much more defined the stitches were or the holes that you created or, oh, blocking does a lot for your piece. It does. And I don't know if you can see it, but I'm, I, but I have, I'm, I have tighter tension on one side than I do the other. So if you look, it's not straight. It's kind of hard to see, but it's kind of wonky. But when you block it, it evens all of that out. It's, and you know what, you can block acrylic yarn too. I've seen people do it. I've done it for myself. It's not as effective by any means, but you can still do it to even out your, your stitches. And when I find like with acrylic, I tend to use warmer water instead, like instead of a cooler mist, um, just to relax all of your stitches. Like relaxing those stitches are definitely key to most of your wearable pieces, I find. Yeah. Yeah. You made me a believer with your, oh my gosh, what is the name of that? Changing course cowl. Yeah. That's another one of my absolute favorites of yours. And I was, I can't remember what issue I was having. And then you explained it to me and I was like, oh my goodness. And I blocked it. I was like, oh, game changer. It's blocking <laughs> great way <laughs> to fix your tension problems for the most part. Yeah. Um, I do have the week two prize in front of me for those who want to see it. Um, I'm still going to draw on Friday because I did see that there were still some of you posting under week two today. Um, but I'm having a hard time being patient. And so I figured showing you what week two was would definitely help Nikki and I not ruin week three's prize. Because week three's prize is amazing. Okay. So we're going to show you week two's prize. And I'm hoping the camera will pick this up real well because they're little. <laughs> so week two is going to be a custom pair of oh, stitch markers. Um, that so was colors that were pulled from the cowl, the blue cowl that I made for this cow. I will show pictures later, but I know it's not picking up nearly as nice as it should be. But I will take pictures and post them in the group later under week two so you could see the stitch markers. I had so much. So <clears throat> uh, thank you, Kim. She was saying that is so pretty. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it was about my cowl because it came in a minute ago oh she says how nice with the stitch markers yes and I love your stitch markers I love the clasp on them and they're always so pretty too I am having a lot of fun making them it's just something that was easier for me to do when I was having more trouble with my hands from crocheting so I found another outlet and while I haven't been able to really do it a whole lot lately summer's been way too busy um, I kind of can't wait for fall just to jump back in. It is nice having another creative 
outlet sometimes, like you said, that like if like if my hands are hurting or something like that and I can't really crochet or knit, I love having some other way to keep our minds and our hands busy. So yes, yes, absolutely. I think it's important to right for our own mental health. We are very creative mm -hmm. people and not being able to do what we want to do. Um, it affects you a lot mentally, I think. It does. And I didn't realize, um, I think it was, I think I went like three or four days without being able to crochet because my hands were hurting so bad. This was a while back. I thought I was going to go nuts. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know what to do. And I ended up in my yarn room, like organizing stuff. And I'm like, I just, I remember the first night, which I was, I was hurting really bad too. So it was kind of making me ir irritable. I just went to bed. I was like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know how to watch TV without crocheting or knitting. I'm going to bed. Yeah. Um, but then it's like also when I was able to jump back in, it made me appreciate it so much more. It's like I really took advantage of the fact that I can just crochet or knit anytime, not really anytime I want to, but, you know, have a long day. I didn't realize that was so like vital to me being able to just like decompress and it helps like with anxiety and things like that. So, yeah. Uh a hundred percent agree. Like I know you and I were discussing it earlier, but when I kind of took that big hiatus there after getting COVID and just feeling kind of gross. Yeah. I, I couldn't even walk into my yarn space. Like walking in there was so overwhelming for me. Like I would look at everything. I have all this beautiful yarn and I couldn't do anything with it. And I was actually very frustrated for a long time to the point where I was considering getting rid of everything but my hand dyed, dyed selection, section, not selection, <laughs> but it was, it was pretty bad there for a little while when you just can't do it. And then I find that your brain kind of works against you and it's like, well, we could do it. And then you start doing it and you're like, oh, I don't want to do this. I gotta just mm -hmm. And yeah. so it kind of becomes this vicious cycle for, well, at least it did for me. And it took a long time to kind of bust through those doors and, I will say the last few weeks I've been more motivated than ever. Well, not ever, but in a very long time to kind of get back out there and, and be a bigger part of the community again, because we took us a, a step back for a while. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're back. I've missed my crochet buddy. You no, know, I've missed it too. I've missed being a part of the crochet community and being super active. Yeah. But we all know that sometimes you just have to take a break too, you know? So um, Kim says that she makes teddy bears and um, nope, I got, sorry, the comment moved. Kim says she paints and Heather says she makes teddy bears. How fun. Well, that would be awesome. Yeah. Like do you make teddy bears out of fabric with like old shirts or memory bears or, and then Kim, I believe Kim was our painter. Does she like to, what does she like to paint? I know I used to, before I started crocheting, um, I used to paint furniture and I, I actually miss it. I have um, what we're using as an entertainment center right now. And I have been wanting to paint it for years and I just need to tackle it because I already have what I want in my head, but I miss painting furniture. But I also know that like, I really don't have time right now. <laughs> so, but your pieces that I've seen that you've showed me in the past are absolutely stunning. Like you're very talented when it comes to painting for here. Thank you. Some of my favorite pieces in my house are, I took a China cabinet apart and I just used the top and added legs to it. And it's like a little hutch behind my farm table. It's one of my favorites. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Heather says that she makes them out of faux fur. I bet they're good. Oh. I bet they're, so they're like, all right, so you're crocheting them with faux fur? Oh, Heather, you need to post a picture. I want to see. So cute. See, I and I, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying, I love that people have more than one thing that they really love doing. Mm -hmm. And like painting or sewing or making bears or... What was the other thing that recently someone told me that they did? Now I can't remember, but it was unique. It was something completely different. I'm going to have to go back and look, but um, there's just so many other little crafts that you can do. And I think that it's so awesome 
Um, because we are all in this crochet community and we see what everybody's doing fiber related. And um, when you start hearing about what other people actually like to do as well, that their crochet or knitting is not their only craft, it's so interesting to see what other people have gravitated to. And I mean, it's so unique and it's just as beautiful mm -hmm. as artwork. work. Yeah. Uh, Heather said she'll post for, for sure. And uh, Kim says she's a new painter and she's been taking classes. How fun. I actually have always wanted to be a painter or a drawer and I'm just not I, I have fun and I enjoy it but it's not like like canvas painting it's not anything that I would want to show anybody <laughs> but I enjoy it so there's that that's awesome and I love classes like that like I love that that she's taking classes and learning a new skill it's that's awesome yeah um she also says she scrapbooks and makes jewelry jewelry I can't talk Kim how Fun. So you're a busy little bee, aren't you? And if you don't want to do one thing, you have like three or four other options. Yeah, that is awesome. I know it's like all of a sudden when I started crocheting and then learned to knit, it's like that's all that I want to do. And sometimes I forget that there are other, you know, creative things in the world. <laughs> yeah, but don't you ever get a little bit afraid to take on yet another craft? I already don't have space. <laughs> I don't have space for what I have. I can't imagine adding another one. Yeah. Hey, Gloria. Um, Gloria said, hey. So, hey to you. Thank you for watching. Um, I want to learn to sew. I've always been super intrigued by people that can take a sewing machine and make stuff. I remember when I first, like, realized that a sewing machine was a thing. I don't even know how old I was. I come home from school and I was like, mom, will you make me some bean bags? And she, I, I just thought she was the, just the most amazing thing ever. Like she went in there, set up her sewing machine and made me bean bags. And I was just so amazed, but I will not let myself learn right now because like you said, I don't have the space. I really don't have the time. And as you can see with my knitting journey, I'm going to be all in yeah. and I just can't do it right now. But one day, one day. That's so awesome. I have a sewing machine that my grandmother gave me, but I literally have to YouTube how to use it every time I pull it out <laughs> because I just can't seem to remember. There's all these little steps and like things to do to, to thread your thread. And um, yeah, I'm just not, I'm not proficient at it. And I did make something. I made a little pouch thing a couple of years ago and it is not perfect, but I was dang proud of it. <laughs> You should be. I can't even hand sew. I've tried. I have this blanket that I have had since I was probably 15. I don't know why I don't let the thing go, but I love it. And a lady I used to work with showed me how to fix it. So I was so proud of myself. I spent hours fixing this blanket and then I washed it and it all came apart. Oh no. It came apart. I was like, I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, oh my goodness that's okay sometimes it's just better to leave it to somebody else let them fix it and then you just enjoy it yeah I got a knitting machine an Addy knitting machine and one of my local friends that she sews and she's actually my mother-in-law's best friend um she sews and knits a little and I think she crochets a little too anyways I was doing videos of this knitting machine and she's like I need to see how this works so she come over one day and I showed her how to make a beanie so she made a beanie and we got to talking about sewing and I said I know you don't sew for the public but I showed her my blanket she left with my blanket <laughs> she said this is terrible and I was like I know but I love it and she's like give me that blanket and she literally she took the blanket off my bed and she fixed it for me and it's so it's got another hopefully you know 15 20 years in it so but it was it was really funny oh that's sweet of her to take it and fix it though yeah yeah and now you can enjoy it for a lot longer mm -hmm. hey ronnie hey. my friend ronnie at the hooking reader she's so amazing she is she also makes really cute stitch markers too yes she does i have quite a few didn't know I needed so many. I know. 
Um, Kim said that if she wins the lottery, she will have a room for every craft. And can I have a room too? <laughs> Me too. Yes, that would be awesome. If I had unlimited funds, I'd have a she shed with everything I ever wanted. I told my husband that I needed a she shed. And he says, you have this house. <laughs> Which is not a lie. I've kind of turned it into a she shed. So, whoops. Um, but yeah, I definitely would have a customized craft room. Like, I want one of those, like, you know how those people have, like, the wall that are all the shelves and then you can like open up this compartment and a table comes down and yeah. So that was the dream. The dream. Yep. Yep. Can only imagine the messes I would make. Oh, but the fun you would have. My goodness. Yes. Um, so I got to tell y'all totally like different subject here, but if you caught last week's live, we were talking about different snacks that we like. Okay. And you know what I meant to do? So Danielle, I chickened out. Danielle said that she loves carrots and hot sauce and I chickened out. But what I was planning on doing is I was going to bring a carrot and some hot sauce and try it live, but I forgot, <laughs> but I chickened out. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Um, I don't know. I know it's such an odd snack thing, but it's like seriously my favorite thing to have right now. My favorite go-to snack are carrots and hot sauce. Well, I got some hummus that's red pepper hummus. And so it has some kick to it. So I definitely can see it tastes good. Yeah. But every time I look at that bottle of hot sauce, I'm like, oh, I just don't know. I need to be brave and try it. Just maybe have like some bread or something that if it's too hot for it, just yeah. bread in your mouth. <laughs> too funny. Yeah. I know. I wanted, oh, what was the other one from last week? It was celery and. I don't remember. Oh, I have to go back to that live now because it's on my list to buy celery and whatever it was. Oh. I remember you talking about it and my mind is just blank. If whoever suggested celery, please pop on and let us know mm -hmm. what it is. I know I love salsa, celery and salsa. Yes. Yes. I have celery on my list and I have salsa here and I cannot wait to try it because I can see that being a favorite as well. Yes, because I love salsa but I always have tortilla chips with it. You know, salsa is really good on pierogies or eggs. I have it on both of those things too. I will eat salsa with eggs if I make like a breakfast burrito. But yeah. I don't know about just eggs. Oh, scrambled. They have to be scrambled. Yeah. Hmm. So now I'm hungry. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. I did bring me a snack just in case I got hungry during the live. Um, I don't know if y'all ever had Laura bars. I love these. There's like chocolate chip cookie dough. So anytime I'm like craving like a candy bar or something like that, I'll usually eat those and they're they're really good. Yeah, I haven't had one in a very, very long time, but I do see them every time I'm at the grocery store. Um, Heather wants to know if you make your own salsa. Um, I haven't in a very long time. I've just been buying store-bought salsa, but I could make my own salsa. I just need to, to kind of motivate my butt to do so. <laughs> uh, Ronnie said the, the yarn and food live pretty much. Ronnie, if you caught any of last week's live, that was uh, more of a yarn and life live. <laughs> Never know what we're going to talk about. Nope. No, you're really interesting yeah we like to keep everyone on their toes apparently <laughs> mm -hmm. yep oh goodness well I'm excited about week three and I'm 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 excited but I'm a little sad like the end is in sight so Me. I think we're gonna have to figure out a way to do some more of these even if it's just something small and not as you know big of a project well, maybe people would be maybe interested in a monthly project. Not They don't have to be big, but maybe we can, kind of what we were talking about earlier, pick one certain, one thing, one theme, and kind of do a monthly thing. That would be kind of fun. 
What do I you like that idea? Yeah. Or, you know, I've been enjoying the whole community as a whole. It's been so much fun getting to know um, some of the new people who have joined us for the first time and getting to know some of the ones that have been along for the ride for more than just this cowl. Uh, it's been like, really humbling, I guess, in a way, because I just didn't expect, especially because it was a paid cal this time. Like I've never, I've only done two cals in my entire crochet career. And the first one was the free overcomer one. And this one was a paid one. So I really wasn't sure how that was going to go. And I was a little bit nervous about it because I'm like, oh, who am I to charge for this? Like, who am I to but anyways, that was a whole me thing when it came to this. And I'm just so grateful for every single person who took the chance, bought the pattern, and is kind of sticking it out with us through this entire month. Yeah. And their cows are so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like, like you said, we can have some free and some pay. Because look, this is the thing. And I didn't understand this as when I was a new crocheter. I was just in literally, this is what I thought. And there's nothing wrong with this. But now as a pattern designer, I understand why we charge. But I was just like, why am I going to pay for a pattern when I can get it free? You know what I mean? But I feel like um, that's why I try to have some free patterns and some paid patterns. Um, but yeah, you definitely deserve to charge for your pattern because, because it's amazing. And as people that bought it, see, it's not a one and done. Like you're going to use this pattern over and over again. So, well, and that's the, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no. I just, that's the hope that yeah. people more than once. Um, somebody said we could talk about pattern creating, um, I'm always down to talk about that. Uh, do either of you use Knit Companion? I do not. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I've never heard of it. So if you can elaborate for us about a little bit what it is and we can look into it, maybe that's something we can uh, look into using. My best advice, if you have been wanting to design a crochet pattern, if you were like I was and I was looking, for me it started out because I was looking for a certain, I think it was a bulky weight beanie. And I had this idea in my head and I could not find it. And finally, I'm like, I'm just going to do it myself. Um, I would say jump in and do it. And this is the thing. Do the very best that you can. Write the pattern to where it makes sense for you and then find some good pattern testers. Let me tell you, my pattern testers make my crochet patterns. They make it to where other people can use it because not everybody speaks Nikki. <laughs> Yeah, right. And I actually, I'm, I got a pattern in testing right now that's going to go live on Friday. And um, it was a little bit out of my comfort zone. But let me tell you, my pattern testers killed it. And they find all my math mistakes, because they're amazing. So just get people like, I would suggest having new testers and experience like very seasoned testers because those seasoned testers are the ones that are going to find all those little details that you're missing and trust me I've been designing for a bit now a couple a few years I don't even four years it's been a while mm -hmm. anyway um I still miss a lot of the little things and so I found when I first started designing that you get really really disheartened by all of the mistakes you've made or all of the little things that are missing or those tiny little details or gram grammar errors, which I still have in my patterns. But well, and they catch them. Your testers are there to catch them. They're not there to make you feel bad and feeling that little bit of disappointment. It's okay. Uh, but don't let that discourage you from moving on to the next one. Because let me tell you, my very first pattern was a disaster. And while it works now, there's still a really big part of me that wants to go back and have that, like remake that pattern, have it retested, um, just so I know it's up to my standards now. Because it was a hot freaking mess. Same. And there's so many of my patterns, like you said, that I want to go back and revisit. And I really just haven't had time. Um, but even the way I laid my patterns out, like I can't, like I don't even like to look at my old patterns. Um, but look back 
And instead of looking at all you lacked or all that you think is wrong with it and look how far you've come Mm -hmm. and the mistakes that you make, like Danielle was saying, use that to learn from. And, um, and if you ever catch a mistake in a designer's pattern, reach out, especially like, I love it when somebody tells me because we need to know. And also it opens that door for conversation. You get to meet somebody that is using your pattern and all of the things. So mistakes happen, but mistakes are there so we can fix them and we can learn from them. Exactly. And you find even if someone fought like the pattern's been released and someone finds a mistake in there that has been missed by myself or my testers, you know, those things happen. We're all human. It, especially with those patterns with a lot of numbers or like my newest one that's coming out, it, there was so much math and there's so many numbers. It is easy to miss a small error. Um, like we're just human. We're all human. Our testers are human. Uh, things are going to get missed. So we definitely love when people come to us and say, Hey, I found this and this, and, and then you can work through it make sure you fix it, send it an update. I always try to send those people who bring me an error, another pattern, just as a thank you. Thank you for making, like helping me make my pattern just that much better. Um, and the other thing I was saying about bringing on new testers or someone who has never like newer crocheters as well. Um, That's super important because if your pattern can be made by someone who's not in the strongest side of crochet yet or the strongest crocheter or maybe hasn't made that item before, if they can make that, you know you have a solid foundation for your pattern. So it's really important to have that range of experience level and skill level through your pattern. Yes, and it gives us a chance to build our skill Mm -hmm. of explaining it because I know for me, I have one way to explain it and I, then I have no more words. I have no other way to look at it. So having pattern testers that may be confused in an area, I can explain it. And then if that ever comes up later on after it's released, it's not, it's not me being like, uh, what do I do? (laughs) You know? Well, and your pattern testers can sometimes word it way better than you can. I cannot tell you how many times they said, how would I say this? And some of them know how to speak my language here and can be like, well, I would say it in whatever. And a lot of times I will use how they word it because I'm like, yes, that makes way more sense than what I was trying to say. (laughs) I have several favorite, which I love all of my pattern testers. But there's a few of them that lay things out for me because I'm ADHD. They they lay things out for me that I can I can follow it and I can fix things as I look at it. Mm-hmm. And one of them is also a technical writer. So she will fix what I, she, it may not even be my words, but she'll fix it to where it's easier for people to read and comprehend instead of it just being, you know, a paragraph, she'll be like, this is how I recommend breaking this up. And I'm like, Oh, that is genius. So, so yeah, pattern testers make the patterns. And if you're a pattern tester, we thank you. Yes. And I don't think they get the thanks they deserve. Honestly, like, I agree. You guys are the backbones to us designers. And I'm truly grateful for every single person that takes the time to go through the pattern once. And then there's even sometimes some of them go through it even twice or three times or help me. Or I cannot tell you how many times I've stopped and started a pattern test because things weren't working out. So we are so grateful for you guys and all the madness that you go through just to help us. Mm-hmm. Um, couldn't do any of it without them. Like pattern testers are the backbone of the designer. I agree. Uh, that's my opinion. Behind every good designer is a handful of testers. <laughs> that may want to wring your neck every now and then. <laughs> yes. The, I'm glad I haven't met me in person. <laughs> Just kidding. Right. Um, Heather said, are you still doing the monthly square? Yes. Yes. Danielle and I both. Um, although I think Danielle, you've done like the last two. So it's my turn this month. <laughs> I think you, yeah. I did July's. I think you did June's. Yeah, I did. We usually, mm-hmm. yeah. 
Well, Kim, we appreciate your support. I cannot lie. I cannot, I'm having a harder time remembering which ones, like what stitches we've done or what combinations we've done. So coming up with new squares, I'm like, well, did we do that? <laughs> I know I have one. I, another reason why I keep forgetting to announce August square is because I had what I wanted to do and then I changed my mind and now I've changed my mind again. And I'm actually going to have to talk to you about it and see, I don't think you've done this one. Oh goodness. Um, so I think we're talking about knit companion. It's free. It highlights the row you are on. It lets you place stitch markers where you want. Okay. So if you get up, like it'll, it'll show you right where you left off. You could do multiple patterns on it. Know which hook to use. She said it's on Ravelry. So she's talking about knit companions. Hmm. And. And you two are going to scream, where has this been? I agree. I can't wait to check it out. Thank you. So I'm going to check it out as soon as we're done this live because I'm super intrigued. Anything that's going to help us keep track of what we're doing or where we are um, is key, is going to be best friends. Um, I'm not sure who this is commenting. I'm sorry we can't see your name. Um, she says it believe she believes it would help to just place a few words on the row that we join when you say slip stitch to join, it, uh, I was totally lost. Okay. okay. Maybe that can be something in the notes. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Heather said she'd like to start testing again. Yes. Testing is a lot of fun. I have created such amazing relationships with some of the people who have been testing for me since almost the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, which is was kind of an unexpected plus for me. I just adore these people and I just didn't expect to create such a close bond with them or want to check in with them or see how their families are doing or their dogs or yeah. like that. So it's become a really fun environment. And when we get in there in the group chat chatting or testing, it's never just about testing. It's always about every a lot of other things too, just life things and, and fun. It is fun. I still remember some of my very favorite tests. And one of them was the sunshine ice coffee cozy. You were in that test, weren't you? Oh my gosh. The husbands that are probably like, who is this Nikki chick? And why does my wife have to constantly go to Starbucks? Like it was, it was, it was a blast. It was, I loved it. And that's what it should be. I mean, Yes, it is a very serious process. And yes, we need accuracy when testing, but it doesn't have to be like all work and no fun. And I love the chats that end up being like that just make you laugh out loud. Like, there's been a few, there's been quite a few. And that's the one I was thinking of too when I tested your sunshine pattern. It was a hoot. That was the best. Yeah. Like it's funny when my husband gets jealous because he's just like, what are you smiling at? What are you laughing at? I wish I could make you smile and laugh like that. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's a, it's a crochet thing, baby. You, you wouldn't understand. He's like, well, I wish I could make you smile and laugh like that. And I'm thinking you do honey, just not right now. Cause I'm in this group. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh goodness. He's like, what are you doing? Where, who are you chatting to? Like you guys are really going, I'm like, Oh, it's the testing group. We're just going along here. And, and it's like, he never, he's like, what did he say? He said something about like, you seem to have so much fun when you're doing like the most intense part of your pattern. And I'm like, it's supposed to be fun. Like, yes, we're supposed to be serious, but I don't want to be stressed out the whole time thinking yeah. this isn't working or this mm -hmm. isn't working. I want to have fun. And I love the girl, the girls. And I've never had a guy test for me yet. That'd be super amazing though. Mm -hmm. um, but I love when they're in there and they're just, having so much fun and we're talking about yarn or colorways or just um one of my recent tests we were all showing our dogs or our cats or pets that join us while we crochet and it was just so much fun it was awesome oh, that is fun i know i miss my zoe girl because i was looking back at pictures and it's like if i like uh, take a picture of me crocheting or something she's either on my lap or like beside me or she's in the background like it's so funny. I just, I just crack up every time I, I see those pictures and I miss her. I was thinking about that with, um, you can usually hear her snoring 
or her little grunts. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's my house is so quiet. Like I didn't realize how much space that she took up. Like, oh, yeah. Um, Kim said, where exactly do we find both of your patterns? Um, we're both on Ravelry. Um, a naughty habit designs is Danielle and I'm Avery Lane creations. And then we're both on Etsy. You're on Etsy too, right? Yeah. And um, go ahead. Blogs. We both have blogs for our free patterns and tutorials and, and whatnot. I think Nikki has more tutorials on hers than I do at my, on mine right now. But yes, we have our free patterns on our blogs and we can link all of the shops if you guys are interested once the live is done. Yeah, remind me and I'll do that. And I know like on Instagram, we both have like links in our bios. And um, that's actually what I may do is just post that link because all of the links are there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, Kim, for asking. Actually, I have, I actually have um, in the featured section of the group or the announcement section of this group of my Facebook group, I have a post where it has all of my links. And Nikki, you're welcome to add a post to the announcements with all of your links as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and that way it's an easy way to find where we all are and what we're doing. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kim. Yes, thank you. All right, y'all. Well, we are almost at an hour again. It's always so much fun. And we're definitely going to find some more ways to um, do things like this. So if you have some suggestions, drop them below. Um, and we were also talking earlier about, um, I know that, for instance, the triangle cow, I was always super intimidated by that. And so we want to, if there's like a crochet pattern that you've been wanting to make or a certain item and you're intimidated by it, let us know because that's another thing we want to do is try to like push you out of your comfort zone a little bit and and make that easy for you. So yes, yes. Let's like we will help you along the way and and get you trying new things because we're down for that. We're down yeah. for trying all the new stuff. Well, thank y'all who joined in the live. If you catch the replay, say hey. And don't forget to go enter week two's um, giveaway. So you don't want to miss out on that. Yeah. Okay, y'all. Until next time. Bye. Bye.